Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I master my tracks from start to finish to make them sound perfect and as loud as the other songs in Spotify. I will walk you through my whole process using free plugins so you guys can follow at the same time and I will also share a few different viewpoints, maybe surprising, that really helped me improve my mastering skills. For example, how I believe that everyone telling you to master at minus 14 LUFS is a complete scam. If you've been watching my past Future Bass videos, you'll probably recognize the song as it is this one that we are going to master today. It changed quite a bit since last time you heard it as it now became a collaboration with Farnon and Freddy Alva but it is now finished and I love it. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump right in and talk mastering. Quick disclaimer before starting, mastering is obviously very dependent on your track and its mix and its frequency spectrum, so don't really copy exactly what I do in the plugins as it might not work out for your track, but just listen to your track and adapt it. So a few things to know before even starting mastering your track is one, keep it simple and subtle to get the best results. Mastering shouldn't be doing any major changes to the song. If you have something very important to change in the mix, go back in the mix. Like if you have a lot of low end rumble, go back in the mix and EQ all your instruments to remove the low end where it's not needed. Second, I personally do mine in a fresh project just because it's a personal preference, it looks cleaner, but also if you have not like the best computer specs, it will really help you save your CPU some power. And finally, I see so many producers spending like hundreds of dollars into a professional mastering but remember that no one will ever make the difference between a professional master tracks and yours, as long as the mix sounds good, except producers. But you're not making music for producers, you're making it for regular listeners. And they don't have any technical audio knowledge. Honestly, just save yourself a couple hundred dollars and just learn it, practice it, because it's honestly not that hard. Or you can use an AI mastering service platform like Lender, but I will talk to you about it later in the video. Okay, so we are now in Logic Pro and the first thing I do all the time is put an EQ and remove the very low frequencies. Everything that is around like under 30 hertz, I just remove it just to be sure. So I'm just gonna do this and put it at like 30, 35. Obviously the part that I'm gonna put on loop is the drop because it's the loudest part. So you wanna mix, like do your mastering at the loudest part of your song. So now you guys are gonna be spoiled, but it's a thank you for watching the video. There you go. Now on the same EQ, I'm gonna just cut the frequencies that I think aren't working in the song and needs to be tamed a little bit. Also, I'm just doing this with like the stock plugin EQ from Logic. You can do the same with like any EQ that you have. There's lots of free ones or stock ones work really great. So yeah, just that. <laughs> I use this technique. Some people are saying like it's good or bad or whatever. It works for me, so I like to use it where I just put like a little spike and kind of try to listen where like here it's too muddy, it's way too muddy. And I know it's usually the case with my tracks, so I'm gonna tame this one down. This, like all that, you don't want that. Yeah, around 4.50, I think I'm gonna do that. And as I said, I'm gonna keep it subtle. Yeah, I think this is enough. Usually I don't do anything more than like 3 dBs up or down because you wanna keep it subtle and simple. Here I'm just trying to see if there's any like harsh frequencies that like hurt your ears. Actually there's this one at like around the 10k here. Yeah, all right, I'm happy with this one. So now I'm gonna go to the additive EQ. So I'm just gonna put another EQ and this time I'm gonna push frequencies that I think needs more help with. Usually the things that my tracks need is more presence and clarity around the two 5K um, Hertz area. So I'm probably gonna be looking at to doing this using the same technique. Just a bit wider to, to, to like do the switch. Yeah, I like 
like that one. I'm just going to tame it down a little bit so that it's not too harsh. All right, so now with the EQs and without. You can already hear that it sounds a bit clearer and less muddy and that's exactly what you want. All right, now the next thing I want to do is to add a little bit of compression to glue everything together. For this, I'm just going to use my compressor from Logic. So stock plugin works really great because it's going to be very subtle. So here I'm going to get a little bit more of a ratio, but really keep it uh, very, very subtle. And now I'm going to go back to the threshold. I'm being careful that I'm not changing too much the attack transient on my drums. And now the next thing I want to do is make it a little bit wider, just a tiny bit. So for this, I use Ozone Elements. It's supposed to be a paid plugins, but they give it for free like so many times a day, uh, uh, not a day, a year. <laughs> every every year, like many times a, a year, they, they do like sales or I don't know, discounts or stuff like this. And I got myself the Ozone Elements, Neutron Elements, Nectar Elements all for free free. So be on the lookout for those because they often give it for free. So here on this one, I'm just going to use the imager, not the maximizer yet because that's the limiter, but that'll be after. And here I'm just going to go a little bit. Like mono, stereo. Just make it go. Yeah, this is way enough, not too much. Now, finally, let's do the loudness with the limiter. As I said, I'm going to use Ozone for this and I'm going to use the maximizer here. For starters, I'm going to use the master assistant. So I'm just going to say medium for streaming and just let's let's the magic do it. So for the loudness, I'm going to use Yulin loudness, loudness meter. Damn, I can't say that word. <laughs> Um, to measure the LUFS. And as I was saying in the intro, I am definitely not aiming for minus 14. It is, I don't know why people say this actually, because, you know, obviously I'm not a mastering engineer, audio engineer or anything like this, but in my experience and from what I tried, every time that I aimed for this minus 14, my song was so weak on Spotify and in the playlist I had to like turn my songs up so that it's at the same loudness as the other song. So it's just stupid to do that. Honestly, no one does this. <laughs> what I do is that I actually download by actually on Beatport some reference tracks and I bring them in Logic and I analyze their loudness. And most of the time for a future bass, they're gonna be like between, sometimes they go up to minus three, but Minus eight, minus three is from what I um, noticed the the usual at UFS. So here, that's what I'm gonna try to aim for. Not minus three because it would be too much, but like minus eight, minus six would be good. So that's what I'm gonna go for. So for this, I'm just gonna play the song. The ceiling is minus one. That's great. But then the more you push the threshold, the louder it gets. Just make. And so the first thing I'm going to do is to, I'm going to go until it saturates so that I know um, what, like how far I can go. And then I'm going to come back uh, down. And you can see we're at minus five, but minus five is, is a bit. Yeah. I'm going to go minus seven here. To have a bit of room so that nothing else saturates. Yeah, I also try to not be over minus one dB of uh, true peak max, but we're good. I'm gonna check as well other parts of the song to make sure it doesn't. Don't make it go away. Just make it go away. So yeah, I think that's good right now. 
Finally, the last thing you can do and that I like to do is to use span normally or the multimeter, uh, which is the equivalent of span in Logic Pro, just to make sure that my frequency spectrum is balanced, that my correlation, you know, I don't have any phasing issue, um, just to check that everything is good. So yeah, everything looks good, everything sounds good, so I think we're done. That's it. <laughs> that's really not complicated. Just keep it simple, subtle, and that's it. So after all the tweaks and modifications we made throughout this video, I really think that the song sounds way cleaner and louder now. If we take a listen before the mastering... ...and after the mastering... I think we have a pretty good result here. Now, if you don't want to do the mastering yourself because you don't feel confident enough or you don't really know what to do for your track specifically, you can still use services like Lander. Lander is an online music software where you can get your music mastered, distributed on all streaming platforms, find thousands of samples, use their collaborations tool and plenty more things. Their mastering service is pretty cool. You can have unlimited revisions and you can even use a reference track to give it an idea of the sound you're looking for. I tested their mastering AI myself for the same song and I was pretty impressed with the result. Here is a snippet of how it sounded before. And how it sounded after their mastering. Obviously, you don't have any control in it if you want to go in details, but if you don't want to bother and get a professional result in minutes, it's honestly really decent and worth it. If you are interested in trying it out for yourself, you can grab 15% off with the link in my description, but in the meantime, keep learning and I will see you in the next one.